Hey everybody, what's going on? It's your girl, Just T, you guys. I'm back, y'all. Here I am coming at you guys with a little quick recipe, you guys. I just got off work and I wanted to make something really good, but something also quick. So I came up with some meatloaf meatballs. It's going to be real quick and easy. The most time it's going to take is going to be making, you know, rolling the meatballs whatever so i'm just gonna jump right on into this video you guys all right so i'm gonna start out with right here i have two and a half about two pounds i have two pounds of ground beef this is 80 20 ground beef um in my food processor i have a half of a white onion i'm gonna just mince that up or either you can use minced onion in the little um containers or you can just chop it up really really small or you don't have to put the onion in it it's up to you you're also going to need a cup of milk so i have one cup of milk here and seasoning wise I have this is one cup of seasoned breadcrumbs I left them out so I can show you guys that's one cup also I'm gonna be cheating a little bit I'm gonna use the meatloaf seasoning pack now doesn't matter what brand you use I just happen to use this one so just one pack one envelope of the meatloaf seasoning also got my sassoon I'm gonna be using two of those those are by Goya all right, I'll show you the box too that this comes in. I'll try and grab that real quick because some people be asking me, um, what does it look like? All right, so I'm going to show you guys what it looks like as well. Also, I have minced garlic. This is one tablespoon of minced garlic. I have one and a half teaspoons of seasoned salt. I also have one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. And also, guys, because I want gravy with mine. Now, you can do a tomato base if you want to. And I have a recipe for the sauce for tomato base. And I'll put that down in the bottom in the description box for you guys. But I'm going to just use some gravy. Some gravy that I have not even made myself. Yes, <laughs> right off the jar. I'm going to use that. And I just have a couple of different ones that I'm showing you. So, you know, it's a really quick recipe. Like I said, I just got off work. So, ooh, Jesus. And you're also going to need some flour. So, I have one cup of flour. And you're also going to need some um, type of oil, some vegetable oil. I have canola oil. You're going to need maybe about a cup of that because we're going to fry these up just to brown them a little bit. So I'm going to start adding all of my seasonings in here. So I'm going to add my ground black pepper in there, my seasoned salt. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. My minced garlic. I'm going to put that in there as well. My breadcrumbs. I'm going to add those in here as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my onions real quick. So I might get a little loud. I'm just gonna chop those up. Let's see how big are they? I want those a little bit smaller. Cause right now they're like about like that. I'm hoping you guys can see that. Can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> I want them a little bit smaller, especially because I have kids, small kids eating them. You know how kids are when it comes to like, you know, onions and bell peppers. You got to make them small. They can't really tell that they're actually in there. So I think that might be about one. You get a spoon. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to just add these right in here as well. gonna add these onions right in here now you can saute them a little bit but um it's gonna be cooking in the oven as well so that's totally up to you I'm just gonna add mine right in here because I'm trying to be quick with this I'm gonna go ahead and pour that cup of milk in here as well and now you got to get dirty got to get your hands dirty got to get a little dirty so you just want to mix this up really really good And then we're also, we're going to add in this as well. I should have already opened it up, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit. So, let's go ahead and open this up. So, I'm just using one envelope of the meatloaf seasoning in there as well so still gonna you know give it that meatloaf flavor and just mix everything up 
And you're gonna want to get yourself like maybe a tablespoon, um, a little small um, ice cream scoop, you know, like the small ones or like a butter scoop or something. So when you start to form your meatballs, you want them all to be the same size. And also guys, this would be like really, really nice around the holidays are coming up. You have some guests and everything and you want to put something out. You can still do it with the gravy and everything or you can do it with the tomato um, base. There's so many different sauces that you can use on here. You can do teriyaki, you can do the jelly. There's, there's so many ways that you can go with this. So I'm just trying to get this all mixed up really, really good. I'm gonna add in my sasson packets. I like to add these in a little last. So let me go ahead and add this in here. And I have two sasson packets. Once I clean my hands and hopefully I don't forget, I'll try and show you guys what the box looks like. Sasson has some nice flavor in there. I'm just trying to get this mixed up. So I'll be right back guys. I'm just gonna finish mixing this up. And then once okay, I guys, start, so I got that pretty much mixed up and I'm just gonna use this little scoop. This is a one eighth of a cup of a scoop. Let me see that. Okay, yeah, you can. So you just want them all to be same size and you know, I'm just put them in here. And I'm making a lot of meatballs. So this is gonna be like leftovers tomorrow. <laughs> it sure is. Or you can use a teaspoon not a teaspoon, a tablespoon if you don't um have some scoop or something. Because you can just measure them. I normally don't use one of these. I just kind of eyeball it. But I'm just trying to give you guys, you know. And so, too, I use, sometimes I use Pam or some type of cooking spray on my hands. Just so that they won't stick together. And I also have my flour over here. So, you're going to get your meatballs rolled up. So, I'm going to make them about that size. Can you still see? Yeah. So, I'm going to make them about that size. And what I'm going to do is going to roll them around into my flour. Just want to dredge them into your flour. Because we're going to brown these on the stove. It's going to be nice little crust to them. And then I'm just going to sit them aside. So I'm just going to keep on rolling my meatballs. And dipping them into the flour. And just putting them on here. And what I'm going to also do is I'm going to put this little pan that I had them in, I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator for about a half an hour just to let them kind of get a little firm a little bit before I put them in the oven because right now they're still pretty soft. All right, so once I get all that done and I bring them back out the refrigerator after half an hour, I bring you guys right back, all right? Okay, everybody, welcome back, you guys. So it's been a half an hour. It's been actually a little bit more than a half an hour. I ain't gonna lie, but I took those meatballs. I had them in the refrigerator to just let them get firm up after I dredge those in the flour. You want to roll them around in your flour. And I'll have some canola oil, about a half of a cup of canola oil in this pan. And so now I'm going to just drop these meatballs in here because now we just want to get those brown. We just want to brown them. Not going to cook them. Just want to get them brown on each side. And you want to go ahead and preheat your oven for 350. Now you may have to do these in batches as well if you have a lot because you don't want to overcrowd your pan. All right. So I'm just going to get these all in here. Just get as many as I can possibly without overcrowding this pan. Because we're going to finish cooking them in the oven. So you don't have to cook them, all right? But just do them in batches. And I, like I said, I have my oven set for 350. You want to go ahead and preheat your oven. And... I have myself another pan that I'm going to put them in. This is a disposable pan. I'm just going to put those right in here. And we're going to put those in the oven, y'all. It's not going to be long before they get done. Real quick and easy. Real simple recipe, you guys. Just want to brown them. They get light brown on the side, you know. I'm going to have to roll them around. They smell so good. Oh, my God. They smell good. Damn, I'm hungry. I want something quick, but something really good. And I love meatloaf too. I love meatloaf, but I'm like, this is, to me is like a personal little, personal meat, meatloaf balls, you know? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Go ahead, get yourself a couple of these with some gravy. Oh my God. Yep. It's going to be all on. It's going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead, guys. I'm going to finish browning these up, and then I'll bring you guys back, okay? And we're going to move over to the next step. Like I said, just continue to brown them in batches. 
Now you're not cooking them all the way. You just want to brown them. Let me see if I can show you guys. Like you just want to get them brown. You know, you want them brown on all sides. Okay. Yep. I'm just gonna roll them around, and I have my heat, my um stove temperature set on a medium, medium high. I have it on a six. So I'll bring you guys back after I finish getting all of my beef balls browned up, and I'll bring you guys back before I put them in the oven, okay? Okay, guys. So I'm like done, and I'm about to get ready to take the last ones out. So I'm in. So if you want to make homemade gravy, see how you got all that flour at the bottom of this pan? You can see it. It's, it's starting to turn brown. It's getting darker. That's actually cooking the flour, so you just have to get the oil out of here. But you could use this to make your own gravy, but I'm being a little lazy today, and I don't really feel like doing all that. So, I opt out to make gravy, but this is what they're looking like right now. I'm just going to get them all in this pan. Like I said, you just want to sear them. You want to get them a little brown, so... Go ahead and turn this eye off. And then I'm going to just get these right in the oven. 350 is what I had my oven set on. And I'm going to put these in there for 45 minutes. And what I'm going to do is, so I'll, not 45 minutes, let me say this, because we're going to put the gravy on them. So I'm going to put those into the oven for about... About 30 minutes, I'm going to put this pan in the oven, uncovered, just like this, for about 30 minutes. And then I'm going to come back, and that gravy, let's see, the gravy that I have in the jar, I'm going to go ahead and just pour that on top of it, and then put it back in so the gravy just warms up with it, all right? And so once I get ready to take these out and add the gravy, I'll bring you guys right back, all right? Okay, guys, so welcome back. So it's been a half an hour, and this is what they're looking like right now. So I just pulled them out because all I'm going to do now is pour that gravy on top of them. And then I'm going to just put them back in for another 15 minutes. And I'm going to check them because, you know, your oven is going to vary from mine as well. So you just want to make sure that the internal temperature is 165 before you eat these. So don't be putting in your oven for no 45 minutes. And they're like, yeah, just T said to cook them for 45 minutes and they're going to be done. Mm -mm. And your ass gets sick. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. So what you do is you put them in there for 30 minutes, put your gravy on there, like so, and then put them in again for 15 more minutes, and then check them with the thermometer. If you don't have a thermometer, then cut it open and make sure that it's no longer pink inside. Alright, so I'm just going to put this on here, like this, and I'm just going to put these back in here. Oh my gosh, y'all, they smell so good though. Just gonna put this back in here for 15 minutes and then I'll bring you guys back because they're gonna be done. Look at that. It looks good, don't it? Come on, get some. I know you want some. I'll bring you back though. We're gonna have this together. 15 minutes. See you then. Okay, guys, so welcome back. Now it's been 15 minutes when I put that gravy on there. So now I'm gonna take this out the oven and show you guys. And it's all nice and bubbly. Okay, let me get this out. I'm only trying to burn myself. Let me get this out. Oh, they look so good. That's what they're looking like. Oh, let me see. Let me move this over. Oh, that's not hot. But you guys can see, that's what they're looking like. Look at them. Okay, guys, so this is what they're looking like. I just took them out the oven. Look at that gravy. Now, it does have a little bit of oil from the ground beef around the edges, so all you have to do is just skim that off with the with the spoon, a little teaspoon. Just go around the edges and skim it off. But, y'all, these meatballs are looking good, okay? They are looking really good. Let me get y'all one. You want to try it? I know y'all want to taste one. Pop this one. Look at that. Got gravy all on it, y'all. Come on. OMG. Look at that. Really good. Like I said, it does not take long and it's so easy. It's a nice quick dinner. I'm going to have this with some corn on the cob and I have a pot of rice on the stove. It is actually pretty good and it's about to be on, okay? But as always, you guys, I thank you guys so much for watching, y'all. I hope y'all have a blessed day. It's just tea, y'all. I'm out.